right? Yeah. Yeah. So since we are made in the image of God, if we dream, that means God dreams. And so today I want to I wanna really paint a picture to you of what God's dream is. And what God's dream is, and if that dream is your dream. For you to leave this room today thinking, wow, is God's dream my dream? <laughs> and then if that is your dream already, amen. That means I want to encourage you to keep that dream going on. But if it's not your dream, leave this room today pondering, how can I make God's dream my dream? If you can, if you have a Bible, turn to John 17. You know, we are the International Christian Church, yep. and we know we, we love the Bible, don't we? Yes. Yes. You know, we, we, we are a really Bible church, because hey, there is no better way to confirm God's word than reading this Bible, amen? Yeah. And since we're a Bible church, one of our very core convictions is, hey, when the Bible says something about an issue, what do we do? We just do it. But if the Bible is very silent about that issue, we're like, huh, what do we really do actually? No, no, we're, we're like, how do I, you know, and then you're scratch, scratching your head, you're like wondering, oh, you know, what do I do now in this situation? But hey, as long as it doesn't come to God's word, we have the freedom to do it. Amen? Yeah. And in that Bible church, we are actually disciples. Who loves being a disciple? You know, what, what, I mean, it is amazing to truly be a disciple of Jesus because there is no other person we can follow in life who will give us true life than Jesus himself, amen? Yeah. And, and that church of disciples really love each other so much that we even spend so much time with each other. <laughs> you know, those of you who like being one another, we like grooming one another, you know, we're like the serve ants, grooming one another. You know, who knows what an ant does, right? Ants, they come together and all they do is they really clean each other. They really clean one another to make one another radiant. And so in the Church of Disciples, we really disciple one another. That means we make one another like Jesus. Amen. That's special. Do you go out in the world and someone says, let me help you be like Jesus? You don't see that anywhere else in the world, but in God's church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so with that goal in mind that God has given us the Bible to make us disciples of Jesus, we have one dream. And that dream is to evangelize this world in our generation. Yeah. What does that mean? That every single person in this world has an opportunity to know who Jesus is, what it is for them, and what God calls them to do also. Amen? <laughs> and so my, my sermon for you today is titled, Living the Dream. Mm. Are you living the dream? And what dream are you actually living? <laughs> are you living your dream? Or are you living God's dream? What dream lasts forever? What dream becomes a nightmare? What dream takes you forward? What dream pulls you back? What dream keeps you stagnant? What dream gives you a future, a hope? With love, faith. In John 17, we see where I believe is a great indication of God's dream. Amen? Come on. I want you guys to engage with me today. So that way, I don't want to preach to a crowd that's sleeping. <laughs> so if I say amen, I really would appreciate another amen back. Amen? amen? Hey, come on, guys. You guys are engaging right now. You know, I want a crowd that's really like fight up for God's word. I mean, it's God's word. It's not like we're watching uh, Toy Story 2 or something. <laughs> you know, it's not watching like a movie scene that was, you know, very drastic. We're reading God's powerful word. Amen? amen? So in John 17, let's see in John 17 what Jesus has to say to you today. In verse 20, it says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Let's pause right there for a second. Jesus is praying here, I believe, the greatest prayer anybody has ever prayed in life. The prayer of being unified in Jesus Christ. The prayer that he says, I want them to be in me as I am in you. Think about that for a second. Jesus prays, I want Annie to be in me the way I am in you. Think about that. How do you think Jesus is in God? That's like the perfect relationship ever. It's like, it's like the best relationship you can ever imagine. Those of you who have girlfriends or boyfriends that are dating in a pure way, hopefully, and those of you who are married, you know what it means to be in a relationship. 
You, is that always perfect? No. <laughs> but Jesus says, look, I want them to be in me so that I can, they can be perfect with me and I am with you. I believe that's a perfect trinity. That God says, God, Jesus, and you. Isn't that awesome? But it comes to one thing. It says, believe in the message. In verse 22, he says, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may also be one as we are one. It, it keeps saying it. I in them, and you in me, so that they may be what? Brought to what? Complete, complete unity. unity. Are you guys ready with me? Yeah. Yeah. Does it say complete disunity in your Bible? No. Does it say incomplete unity? No. Does it say unity that is like completion? No. <laughs> Does it say completeness in something else? No. Complete no. unity, right? Yeah. You just want to check it in the same Bible, amen? Come on, tell me <laughs> Then the world will know. It says, hey, because of your unity with me and one another, the whole world will know that you sent me and I've loved them even as you have loved me. Wow. What does Jesus say again? He says, hey, the same way he's going to love everyone is the same way God loves him. Isn't it? Wait, that's crazy. Perfect love. The same way God loved Jesus to love the world. What did God do? Gave up his son. What did Jesus do? Give up himself for us. What do we need to do? Give up ourselves. Give up ourselves also. Yeah. Which is perfect love. And we have this perfect trinity because God wants everyone in the world. God's dream is for everyone in the world. You in this room, whether you're young, old, whatever, you're mature, you have gray hair, you have black hair, you're, you're blonde, it doesn't matter where you're from. Everyone to come to complete, perfect unity. But think about that for a second. Is that going well? So what happened to this prayer? What is the issue? What is the issue behind that Jesus prayed this prayer, but we don't see that complete unity? Even in this room right now, you might feel like, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to be here. Let's be honest, if you're thinking, I raise your hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, God is like, I want this perfect unity to happen. But there's one issue. We forget the dream. What did Martin Luther King say? I have a dream. I have a dream. He says he had a dream. But guess who had a dream before Martin Luther? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus had a dream. <laughs> Jesus' dream was way before even Martin said I had a dream. Jesus had a dream before we were born. Look what it says there in verse 24. It says, Father, I want those who give me to build me where I am to see my glory. Imagine you see Jesus' glory. Paint a picture. You know, you ever seen... You know, you're, you're in your sleep, you're dreaming, and then this radiant figure pops out to you. Shining. You cannot see what it is. That's how it means to see God's glory. The glory you've given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world, though the world does, does not know you, I know you. And they know that you've sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make them known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and I myself may be in them. And the church said? Amen. Amen. You might not know God in this room today. Guess who knows God? Jesus. Jesus. You might wonder, wow, I wonder if God exists. Guess who knows God exists? Jesus. You might wonder, wow, I don't believe these guys. Well, you don't have to believe us. Believe Jesus. Jesus is the only way to know who God is. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So I tell you today, time to live the dream. What kind of dreams do you have? You know, a guy once said, I am sick of following my dreams. I'm just going to ask where they're going to, where they're going to so I'll join them there later. <laughs> it's like the dream is always going somewhere else. You just need to catch up with my dream. It's always going somewhere. You know, another guy said, the reason they call it the American dream is because you have to, to be asleep to believe it. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> another guy said, all men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their mind wake up in the day to find that their dream was just vanity, pointless. 
But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men. Mm. For they act on their dreams with their eyes open mm. to make them possible. Question, are you living your dream? And what dream is that? I want to show you today that the dream you have to live is God's dream. Amen? Amen. Amen. Luke 14, that's what the Bible says there in Luke chapter 4. When you get, get, get a glory when you get there? Amen. Luke 4. Glory. That was fast, bro. Glory. Luke 4. Glory. Glory. Can I get a yeah. yeah. general glory? Yeah. Glory. You know, a guy once said that everyone told me to follow my dream, so I went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. where, where was the dream? In bed. So he went back to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's useful. <laughs> in Luke 4, that's what the Bible says there in Luke 4. It says in verse, in verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. <coughs> what power do you have right now with you? Is it God's power or are you relying on your own power? Yeah. Because one power will burn out, one power stays alive forever. Yeah. God's power always stays alive. Yeah. When you burn out, God's power will keep you going. It says, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to, the, to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the day, on the Sabbath day, he went to the, to the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me <coughs> to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let's pause right there for a second. <laughs> Imagine if God was in this room right now, Jesus was here, and he gets up, and he picks up the Bible, and he reads it. And he says afterwards, in verse 20, in verse 21, he began by saying, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yeah. Wow. You're like, ooh, moment. Jesus is in your very midst. And he says, I have come to proclaim the good news to the poor. You might be here right now and be poor spiritually. What does it mean to be poor spiritually? That your spiritual life is non-existent. That there's no relationship between you and Jesus. Or even though there is, it's on a very low key. Whereby it's like, you know, you can't even compare its relationship with your father or your mother. Mm. But Jesus says, I've come to proclaim the good news that will make you rich in spirit. Yeah. He said to set you free from imprisonment. What sets us, what, what are we imprisoned in? Sin. Sin. I think about my life, I was imprisoned in sexual immorality from when I was 16 to 28 years old. My biggest dream was to have a list of all the women I ever sleep with in different races. That was my dream. That was my dream. That you could take off a list, oh wait, okay, Asian, <coughs> African American, African, from European, that was my dream. What a wicked dream to have. Mm -hmm. That's a very wicked dream. And sometimes you might think like, well, that's me, but what about your dream? Mm -hmm. What dreams do you have that are ungodly? But well, you know what she says? I've come to set you free. Because sometimes those dreams we have are because of the conditioning we were brought up in. And he says, he sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners to recover your sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. How free are you today? Because your dreams determine how free you are. Are you with me? Come on, tell me one. In verse 20, it says, Then he, scroll, then he rolled up the scroll and gave it to the attendant and sat down. Verse, 20, verse 22, All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. You see, when we see Jesus, sometimes we think of him as just a main man. Even these people here, so it's just, just a main man. Mm. So it is not surprising for us to think nowadays when someone says Jesus was just a mere man. Because back then, they also were just a mere man. But look at what it says. In verse 24, truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. 
I assure you that there were many widows in Israel, Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to pray for them, to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And in verse 27, And there were men in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right straight through the crowd and went on his way. And the church said, Amen. I mean, you're just like, whoa, that's the war. He's like, wow. Amen. Jesus is like Matrix movie right now. <laughs> it's like you're in the Matrix movie and there's a bullet coming. Like, it's like, <laughs> and he just walks straight to the crowd. Isn't this slick? I put in my Bible, slick. <laughs> I'm like, reading it's like, whoa. When I read it for the first time, I was like, are you serious? Is this in the Bible? You know, we think the Bible is so boring sometimes, but actually, when you read this, you're like, man, when you imagine it, how that must have been, you see Jesus standing there, he's preaching the word, it's really controversial, and everyone's around him, like, we're going to kill you now, and it's like, nope. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> how bold is Jesus? Man. Jesus is awesome, guys. Amen? Come on, amen. Jesus is awesome. Say that yeah. again. Jesus, Jesus is awesome. Is awesome. Wow. But what is Jesus doing here? Why is he doing what he's doing? Because he had a dream. God's dream. That every single person in the world will be set free. That every single person in the world will become wide eyes open. That every single person in the world will be rich spiritually. We're not a prosperity church, amen? No. <laughs> but we want you to prosper in your spirituality, amen? <laughs> not, not financially, but <coughs> spiritually. So I've got two points for you today. Come on, tell me one. Point number one, catch the dream. Catch the dream. Point number two, uh, I don't want to keep you long. Fight to keep the dream alive. Who was saying Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, I love it. Who no, lost Kung Fu Yeah? I mean, on, on, on this side, on this side, <laughs> on this side. Man, it was like, a, no way. Where's the parent? You, you, you just went Kung Fu a while ago. That's why I don't. Oh! So in Kung Fu Panda, you know what? What was the first scene of the first movie? Who knows what that movie was? The first scene. Eating noodles? It was what? Eating noodles? Mm, no, close. No, there's something. Oh, he was having a dream. He was having a dream. <laughs> <laughs> but how was oh, you guys this have you seen Kung Fu Panda? No? No, 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 no. Jamie, you have a kid now, you should watch Kung Fu Panda with your kids. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. It's really awesome. I like and, I, and I saw and I was looking at the end the dream that, that Poe, his name is Poe. Poe had was so amazing. And he's in his dream, the first thing is in the dream, he has this hat, like this Asian hat, he has a sword, and it's and it's like this this very, you know, like this this uh, this Asian attire that they got, and he's so slick, just walking like a panda, like. And he said, and he said something. He said, "He was a legendary warrior." Mm he -hmm. says, "There is no chance to my awesomeness." <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "His enemies were blinded by his awesomeness." <laughs> and, he, and the enemies were all there, and he sat down at the table eating like this, uh, this dumplings. And he sat down there, and the enemies come. He says, "I'm gonna, what are you eating with all this dumpling? I'm gonna put my fist in your mouth." And he says, really? <laughs> and then he gets up. Get the table away. And he starts fighting everyone and destroying everyone. It's like, whoa, this guy is the, the fastest panda in the world. Which is an irony, of course. <laughs> and, and, he, and he wins the battle in his dream. Mm. And then what happens? He falls to real life. Ah! And he wakes up in his noodle shop. <laughs> But what is key about this dream? This dream wasn't just a dream. It became a reality. Whoa. Yeah. The panda became a legendary warrior. Yeah. <laughs> he became a furious fighter called the dragon warrior. Mm. Wow, think about this. If a panda can have a kind of dream, what are you dreaming about? Mm. Let's just be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a panda. What about, what about us? 
your dreams? What is your dream? Are you dreaming about, oh man, I'm gonna go save lives, oh, let's go. Or are you more like, Let's <laughs> <laughs> oh go to church. Mm. It's quite boring, isn't it? Yeah. Guys, time to dream! Come on, come on. Time to dream! Don't be a panda, be a son and daughter of God, amen? Amen. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. Mark 1. We see you there. What the Bible says about the dream of Jesus. And let's see how God allows Jesus to activate the dream in everyone else around him. You know, I used to live in the Caribbean. And in the Caribbean, we see, we used to sit down, on the, we used to have this special place. We'd go down and watch the, the sun set. And we'd bring our barbecue. And I had this Ford F-150. I had this Ford F-150. Very old. Like, the, the, the exhaust was falling off. But it was still very, very, kind of, you know, retro, kind of cool Ford F-150. And in the Caribbean, everything is cool in the Caribbean. Right, Doesn't right. matter how old it is, it's still cool. <laughs> right, right, Keith, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Caribbean. The Caribbean, yep. everything is cool. When it's old, it's still, wow, that's stylish. Yeah, I like that. I mean, the sun gives everything color. Yeah. It makes everything look special all of a sudden. Mm. And then if you, if you run an F-150 now in London, you'll get pulled over. <laughs> in Mark 1, we see that what in the Caribbean that I learned is that when you like a barbecue, and one coal catches fire, the others that? need to catch fire. Yeah. Mm. And if they don't catch fire, that means they're either wet yeah. or that coal isn't really on fire. Yeah. Mm. Mark chapter 1. In verse 14, it says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus says, wait, 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 wait. Before I want to inspire you, I want to challenge you. <laughs> Jesus doesn't come and say, oh, you know, I've got this great deal for you, so let's do this. You know, why don't you, why don't, why don't I do this for you, do this for me? Yeah. Jesus says, no. <coughs> you change. And believe the good news. And then after, I will inspire you. <laughs> Look at what it says in verse 16. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, so Simon and his brother Andrew casting that into the lake, for they were fishermen. In verse 17, it says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. And Jesus said, Amen. Amen. What do we see here? Jesus says, Repent, believe the good news, and follow him. Yeah. Three basic, quite, quite basic instructions, actually. Yeah. But why are they so difficult to practice in reality? Because who likes repentance, really? In all honesty, we like repentance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what does repentance mean? It means you have to change. Change. Yeah. change. But change is not nice because that means you have to let go of the things you're always doing. Oh no, but I like it so much. Yeah, I know. But you know what? I got a better dream for you. So let's go the other way. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes that's what we say all the time. So, okay, okay, Jesus, okay, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> But it says repent and believe the good news because the good news is actually the good news. The way we're going was the bad news. Yeah. This way now is the good news. Yeah. And so Jesus says repent and believe the good news and then follow me. What did he say? When he said this, how many followed him? Four. James and John. Andrew. And Simon. Four guys followed him. That's what happens after this four. Keep going. We go to Luke 6. Luke chapter 6. I want to show you guys a trend here of what it means to catch the dream. Okay. Come on, Samuel. Luke 6. In verse 12. <laughs> we see there in verse 12 it says. One of those days, you know, one of, you have one of those days? Just yeah. one. Just one of those days when things are going well for you and things are not going well for you. But you know what you do on one of those days? You pray. No. <laughs> one of those days, you just went to a man's side to do what? Pray. To pray. And spend the night praying to God. Just one last question. When was the last time you had an all night prayer on your own? <clears throat> Think about that for a second. 
on your own. No one calling you for a prayer and play. On your own. This is quite, this is quite interesting here. Right? But why is he just doing this? Like what he says. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he had designated apostles. Jesus is trying to catch 12 guys on fire here right now. He's going to say, oh wait, I want to choose 12 people. How many of us are in this room today? One, two, three, four, five, six, one and twelve. And it's like Jesus prayed all night for you all to catch a dream. How would that look like? He went to a mountainside. I'm going to pray for these twelve guys. Because I'm about to give them a dream. A dream that would change their lives. And a dream that will be used to change the entire world. That is worth praying all night for. Mm. Question is, shouldn't we pray all night for this world to be saved? Mm. London is living, we're living in a city where yeah. we have the highest amount of billionaires in the world, but also the highest amount of depression. Yeah. <laughs> London is the loneliest city in the world. Yeah. Wow. People are committing suicide almost every second in this city. Wow. But Jesus says, let's pray for the dream came from one man, Jesus. Yeah. That man became a message. Mm. That message became a, a movement. Mm. And that movement started with just him alone. One man going to five people in our 12. God's dream is what unifies us together. Yeah. Question, what kind of dreams do you have on your heart right now? You know what I did? You know what I always do? Tell us. I thought I wrote it now for you guys. <laughs> so I was thinking, well, what, what, is, what, is, what is Jamie's dream? Mm. What is, uh, is Keithra's dream? I wasn't there, but I think I can sense what she's dreaming about. <laughs> what is Meadow's dream? What is Ramon's dream? What is Mark's dream? Mm. So guess how many dreams you have as a human being every year? Oh. Guess. And guess the numbers. 500? Too low. Oh. Too low. Way too low. Oh, that's the problem. Yes. A thousand. <laughs> a thousand close? Twelve hundred. Close. Fifteen hundred. Very close. Fourteen sixty. Yeah. Fourteen sixty. Very precise though. I don't know how they measure that, but anyway, it's, it's statistics. You have almost fifteen hundred dreams every year. That's four dreams every night. Sleeping dream. Do you remember your dreams every night? No. 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 <laughs> but guess what? There are, top, there are ten top dreams we all dream. First one is, you guys know this one, falling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you're in your bed, like, oh! Yeah. You feel like you're falling in your dream. You're like, what happened here? You know, even last, you know, last week I was in bed and I felt like I was... And it happens when you're just about to fall asleep. And then you're like, oh, fall! <laughs> but you know what God says? God says, fall in love with me. God says, don't fall, they just fall in love with me. Because actually, really, your real issue with falling is because you don't want to lose control. God says, get rid of your control. I am in charge. Oh. Second dream is, you know, where are the Africans in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. This dream is, I think, more for Africans. So, like, the dream is being chased. Yeah. Oh. Being chased in your dream. Loads. Loads. <laughs> being chased in your dream. Okay. Hey, but, but the real issue is, hey, who are you running from? Or what are you running to? Like Isaac and Kipta mentioned today, are you running to God? Third dream. This is a very funny one, and I experienced it before. Being nude in a room full of people. Oh. That's the dream people have. Like, why? Because it's embarrassing. It's the biggest fear, it's a disgust. And I remember one day. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, and what, I remember one day I was I used to work in the Netherlands and I sat down and I went to the to the, to the toilet and I and I forgot to close the door. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. And your colleague comes in. <laughs> and you have this awkward look. <laughs> that awkward look that's like... I forgot to lock the door. <laughs> spoke about it. Of course not. No. It's because they're like, hey, sorry about that. No, it's like, no. <laughs> I didn't say anything, you didn't say anything. 
dear. What about the dream? The dream of flying. Yeah, oh, I yeah. fly all the time. I fly all the time. <laughs> but God says, be free. Be free. I want to set you free. The dream of sexual desires. This is one that is really rampant in our world nowadays. Mm. Whereby we're wishing for an intimacy in our dream, whereby that dream becomes goes all the way to the extreme mm -hmm. and it's very vile. Yeah. But the thing, you know the, the deep desire in the day of every human being? It's a connection with God. Mm. It's an intimacy with God. Like, mm. you know, close to you, God. It's such an unfulfilled love. And what do we do? We replace that relationship with five images in our minds. Mm. We have a dream of dying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's my, when I was a kid, I dreamt of dying. I always dreamt of how, how I would look when I died. How I would come out of my body and look at myself dead. Kind of very... <coughs> I used to remember that as a kid. Mm. Yeah. But you know what God says? Yeah, die. Die to yourself. Mm. Be reborn. Tell a new life. Seven dream. People. Dream about people in your dreams. The question is, are you dreaming about them to be saved? Mm. This, is, this is a very funny one. The dream of tests. Failing a test. Mm. You always dreaded that, that driving test or the exams you're going to fail. But you know what God says? Don't be afraid. Read my Bible and you pass the test. Amen? <laughs> and the next one is the dream of traveling. Traveling from place to place. Oh, you like to dream about traveling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know what God says? Yeah. Stop traveling around. Focus on me and I'll move you from place to place. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and this is, the, this, is the, this, is the, this is the scariest one. The fear of being in a car without control. Oh, oh yeah. I've had that before. You can't that much. <laughs> and you have, you're, in, you're in that car and you don't know how it's being controlled. Yeah. But you know what God says? Never mind. I'm in the driver's seat. You just move aside. <laughs> Question is, where is God for you? Have you put God in the back seat? Is he in the trunk? Is he? Have you driven past him? Is he on the, in the side? Is he in the back seat? Or maybe we've actually just kicked him out out of your car. Mm -hmm. Which one is it, guys? Which one is your dream? Is God's dream your dream? Look what happens in Luke 10. I'm taking you guys through a journey of dreams. Come on, come on, tell me why. Luke 10. In verse 1, from one man, a dream started. That dream became a message. We get a movement. Let's see now how that increases in Luke 10. In verse 1, after the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lamb among wolves. And this is amazing. God chooses from one man, five, four, four join him. From four, they become 12. From 12, they become 72 men. What are they doing? These guys are catching the dream. The question is, how have you caught the dream? If you're here with us for the first time or second time, I want to really ask you, have you really made a conscious decision to really live the dream? God's dream. Not your dream. Your dream will only lead you to wanting more dreams. God's dream was fulfilling. You never want anything else. You guys with me? Yeah. And we see there, in verse 16, what happens when they were sent out. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. Whoever rejects me, rejects him, who sent me. <coughs> in verse 17, the seven two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. It's powerful. It says that, they went out with a dream of Jesus, and even demons submitted to them. You see, when you go out with God's dream, everything will fall at your feet. Mm -hmm. But if it's just your dream, yeah, what power do you have? No power. Your dream is just, yeah, it's just you. But if you have God's dream, the creator of the world in your heart, oh my goodness. Demons will submit to your dream. In verse 18, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
And I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, you know what? I know you're happy right now, but don't be happy because of that. Be happy because you're going to heaven. Who wants to go to heaven? Yeah. If you want to go to heaven, yeah. time to become a disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Time to say, you know what? I want to replace my dream, whether I'm American, African, Asian, Jamaican, whatever. Whatever dream that comes from, African dreams are not really nice dreams, by the way. <laughs> African dreams are dreams of fleeing. Mm -hmm. American dreams are dreams of getting more. But God's dream is about what you can do. Mm -hmm. God using you to do great things in life. God's dream is the greatest dream. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we know what happens in Matthew 28. Three years later, God said to the twelve, He says, Now go. Mm -hmm. After He had cut them on fire, it's like, Now nah, you guys are ready. Now go into the whole world and evangelize all single souls. Mm -hmm. This guy's called the dream. Would you say that? You called the dream? Yeah. yeah. How do we know that? John 4. Come on, tell me wrong. How do we know they called the dream? It's kind of a Bible study today, but it's revealed to you the scriptures very clearly. John 4 and verse 1 says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Woo! Competition right there. <laughs> Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but who? His disciples. But his disciples. You see, when you cut the dream of Jesus, you would do what Jesus did. So the question to ask yourself is, am I doing what Jesus did? In all honesty. It's a very simple question. Am I doing what Jesus did? If I am, amen to God be the glory. If I'm not, amen, let's change. It's very simple. So that I can know that I have God's dream in my heart. Point number two, fight to keep the dream alive. You know, before even going to this point, those of you who read the book of Acts, you know that in Acts 1, we see that from one man it increased to how many? 120 disciples. In Acts 2, it became 3,120. In Acts 4, 5,000 men were added. So in a sense, the Bible only says men at that stage. So they guess they were women because they might have been married or they, had, you know, they were dating or they had a brother or a sister. Remember like 10,000 of them were added at that point. In Acts 6, the Bible says there was a rapid increase. In Acts 11, this, the church in Antioch was said to actually be, have had 30,000 to 4,000 disciples. Oh it's crazy. Would you say they caught the dream? Yeah. They totally caught the dream right there. In Acts 17, the Bible says that these men have come to us and they've turned the world upside down. Did they catch the dream? Totally. And in Colossians 1, what does it say? Let's go there. Colossians 1. Verse 23. Let's be, let's see what the Bible says about catching the dream. Colossians 1, verse 23. It says, If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out of the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard. And that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. And of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Paul says, guys, don't worry. At 69 AD, we cut the dream. We made sure that every single creature under heaven heard about Jesus. Amen. But now we live in our generation, 20, 21st century. How many of us know about Jesus? How many of us are obeying Jesus? God says, it is time to catch the dream. Time to catch the dream. But there's one issue that really stops us from catching the dream. What is the issue? Insecurity. Mm -hmm. now, let's, now let's go into that area. So now I'm showing you guys what the dream is. Now let's talk about you. <laughs> this is the area that, that, that's going to be now a bit more touchy, guys. Amen? You guys ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. You ready? Warming up? Ready, 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 ready? Yeah. Insecurity. Who's feeling insecure right now? 
I feel insecure all the time. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, God, please help me. I don't know what to say. Please help me to say what I'm, 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 I'm like always insecure. My like, pride comes out in my insecurity also. I'm like, oh, no, oh, oh. that's me. And what about you? But insecurity about what? God. Some of us don't really know that God loves us. To be honest, some of us don't really know in our heart that God loves us. Some of us don't know that, that even though our relationships might not depend on what we do, it's dependent on our love. Our identity, we're insecure about our identity. Who are we? Are you guys with me today? Yeah. But you know what, in the first century church, how did it overcome that? Through their worship. Through their worship. Because your worship made it focus on God alone. I believe your worship is your warship. Wow. The ship you get on to go to war. That is what your worship <laughs> is. And let's see what in Luke 3 the Bible says there. Let's bring it to a close right now. How do we see, how did Jesus, I mean Jesus had that dream. And he caught other people on fire by that dream. How did he do that? Luke 3. We see the, the secret that Jesus had there. And you guys must have read this a million times. But now let's see what the millions and one time will help you today. In verse 21. <coughs> you know, a guy once said, I slept like a log last night and I woke up in the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't good, Jamie? Yeah. You told me something to talk about. You know, a, a guy got a place uh, in a movie, and, and his role was to play sleeping. And he says, that was my dream job. <laughs> the dream. 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 dream job. Just sleeping. Oh, okay. You guys get it? Dream job. Everyone get it? Who's <laughs> 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 was that? When I was like, bro, don't tell that joke that way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go to let's go to Luke Luke three, guys. Let's see what the Bible says there, verse twenty one. It says, when all the people were ba were being baptized, Jesus was baptized. Amen. Amen. You know, we gotta be baptized also. We we don't baptize ourselves. <laughs> Disciples baptize yeah. disciples. Amen? Amen? And as he was praying, heaven was what? Opened. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a what? Dove. That's the stand of our church. The dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. <coughs> Jesus was secure in who he was. Are you secure in who you are? He says, you are my son. Imagine if God Almighty says, you are my son. You are my daughter. Whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. I want to inspire you today. To not be insecure about who you are. Because what does this do? It kills the dream. It kills the dream. It kills God's dream coming to life in you. Jesus was so confident in who he was. I really look forward to you guys. Did that look like someone who was insecure? He just got up, read the scriptures, sat down. What did he do? Walk to the crowds like, I don't care. I'm controversial because I've got a dream. When someone has a dream, he will go to the very end of this world to make that dream a reality. But if it's your dream alone, you won't move further. But if it's God's dream, you have the power of the Spirit of God to keep that dream alive. Chapter 4. In verse 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, led the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You know, some of us leave the house without the Spirit. Do you leave the house without a quiet time? Do you leave your house without having spending time with God in the morning? Because it says he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Come on, I need to fast also to lose some weight, amen? Yeah, and quite another one. I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to lose weight, you know. But let's, we gotta be honest, let's be free. Jesus, Jesus was fit. 
We gotta be fit. Jesus, I mean, it's not just you know fitness first. I must be fit. Jesus was fit first. Yeah. Hmm. If God is fit, I don't see. I'm, I'm sure God has six packs. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like God is so like like wow. God must be awesome in appearance. That's God. But we can also be like God. Amen. Amen. In verse three, they will say to him, "If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become <coughs> bread." Jesus answered, "It is written, man shall not live on bread alone." For those who are Dutch, they're like, no way, bread? Oh, man, bread, bread. Man, I just don't live on bread alone. I want to live on bread alone. Yep. In verse 5, my wife says, yeah. In verse 5, the devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor that has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Wow. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. In verse 9, The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, it said, Throw yourself down from here. For it is written, It will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your head against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him in an, until an opportune time. And the church said, Amen. Amen. What do we see here? Jesus being tempted with the three ifs. If, when someone says if to you, what is that person doing? Doubting you. Trying to bring you down. If you are that awesome, mm. if you are this, if you really say you are who you are, yeah. do this. Try to undermine who you are. Yeah. And let's be honest, some of us wake up every morning and we feel undermined already. Mm. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yes. You wake up defeated already. You wake up and you feel like, I just don't want to get up. I don't want to go out. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do anything. I don't feel like, uh, make up sluggish. Mm. But look at Jesus here. 40 days being tested. Mm. No food. Mm. No one's falling, dying. <coughs> and Satan comes to him and says, Huh? <coughs> you are the God. Tell the stone to turn to bread. The mm. perfect time that is weak. <coughs> what does Jesus say? I want to encourage you to know that, wow, Jesus didn't let anything steal the dream. Yeah. Mm. Nothing can kill the dream in you. Only you can allow the dream to be killed. Wow. Only you. It's, it's so powerful because it, there are three things Jesus, that Satan focused on here. It says, the aspect of testing God, the aspect of worship, and the aspect of power. These are the three things that we all struggle with. Oh, but there's God. Oh, but if I get bad, I mean, I mean, God will take care of me, right? Oh, but if I do this, oh, why don't I? You have this inner conversation that yeah. make you rationalize yeah. what you should do. Right. Also, even the aspect of worshiping, like, yeah, you know, I can do it this way. I can worship God and worship something else. Oh, but what about, what about, yeah, oh, wait, man. It can give me this, it can give me that. You start thinking about strange things. And what's Satan doing? It's actually just bring you down. Yeah. So you have no power to fulfill the dream God has for you. So how do we overcome this? Being secure. Being secure. Secure in the fact that God loves you. Secure in the fact that hey, when I pray and sing, I am worshiping my God and God alone. Secure in the fact that I have the word of God with me. And when I open the word of God, there is power in the word of God. Amen. Secure in the fact that, hey, the spirit of God dwells in me and I can do anything. I can go anywhere and I can give up everything for the Lord Jesus. Amen. I tell you today, seriously, that hey, for us to keep God's room alive, we must be like Jesus. Amen. For us to keep God's room alive, we must see, hey, he did not let Satan Amen. take out the dream in him. So how will you let Satan take out the dream in you? Amen. You are more than a panda. 
<laughs> you are way more worth than a panda. You are made in the image of God. Yeah. I'm inspired today. The dream that I just showed you guys all the way going on through the Bible is still alive today. But it's now up to us to keep that dream alive. Yeah. To really keep it alive. And you say, you know what? Never will Satan take out the dream of me. And if you don't have the dream yet, you know what? Say, I want to know this dream properly. I want to be a disciple who makes this dream deep down in my heart. I got deep down in my heart. So that I can really be able to stay committed forever. And even though you're a disciple already, you're thinking, I doubt this dream. Yeah, you might be thinking that. I doubt if I can do this dream because I'm insecure. Well, guess what? God is your security, nothing else. You are actually really insecure. That's true. But now you're secure in God. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Amen. There are four ways, write this down, to make sure you keep that dream alive. First one, prayer and singing. I keep saying it every day, every week. If you're not praying and singing, that dream would die. How do you pray and sing? I believe singing is your war cry. Prayer is your war cry. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the Roman Beritus is? Mm -hmm. The Roman Beritus. It was literally a war cry by the Romans. When they were going to battle with the enemies, what would they do? <clears throat> they had this climb that they made, and they would have their shield up against them. But all of them in one line, tied up against one another, so close that there's no space in between them. And what would they do? They would lift up their shields, and it would be amplifiers, and they would clamber under their shields. <laughs> Imagine if you were in a battle line against the Romans, and all of them were standing before you, and before they came to fight you, all they did was shout. Uh oh, oh my God! Yeah. You'd be, you'd be like, <coughs> just. We just surrender. <laughs> we, we cannot even beat you in your clam already. No. How is your battle cry in the morning? Are you in a battle cry? Or are you in a battle sleep? Mm. I want to inspire you to know that, hey, prayer and singing is what keeps the dream alive. Yeah. God's love keeps the dream alive. And you're secure that way. No, God loves me. I'm not insecure about that. God loves me. Since he loves me, I'm fine. Whoever likes me doesn't like me, I don't care. God loves me. I'm done. Yeah. Let's be honest. Because why is it so powerful? Because this is the creator of the world and he loves you. That's quite special. It's like being loved by Trump. Yeah. And I was like, no, you're not loved by Trump. <laughs> <laughs> or Theresa May. You know, it's like the power, powerful people, when they love you, you should, you should feel like, wow, that's special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So imagine yeah, how God loves you. And I don't think you understand this. I don't think you, I'm, I'm looking at your face. And it's like, imagine God loves you. Yeah. This is the creator of the, of the heavens and earth. He, he just made heaven with his own, just spoke into existence. He just like, let it be this. That's like power. And that, God loves you. That should blow your mind. Third thing, the Spirit of God. If you're not a baptized disciple, I want to inspire you. Become a baptized disciple. Because that's when God's Spirit can really work in you. Yeah. And fourthly, the Word of God. <laughs> and if you put all this together, you are protected, tree of prayer and singing. You are motivated by God's love. You are empowered by God's Spirit. And you are guided by God's Word to keep that dream alive. Amen. I want to inspire you today that God has a dream. And that dream is to be kept alive by us. To know that, hey, that dream is to go to the rest of the world to <laughs> save as many as possible. But that dream now is in your hands. Are you keeping it alive? Please do keep it alive. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen.